Hetze, Hass und Mobbing. Hass. Hate and Mobbing in, in online. A flood of hate comments. This is what trolls like. There's good reason to hate people. Nazi symbols. Uh, fuck whore. You are ugly as shit. You're you're too stupid to kill yourself. I just I can't take it anymore. You don't. You people are supposed to delete themselves. Hating is just a normal maneuver in the information war. There are secret groups, political organizations that are pro online predators that manip manipulate f uh, votes. And this is, in my opinion, the voting for the future. You want to join the organization? Do you know this uh, Nessie proof? Nice. Habt ihr die Seifenblasen mitgekriegt? Did you see the bubbles? <laughs> Super. Okay. Yeah, All right. My name is Deborah Seifert. I'm very happy to, to introduce you the creators of the movie Delete, Your, Delete Yourself, Reich Anders, uh, on whose YouTube channel the documentation was released last Thursday. I gotta say, the movie is called Delete Yourself, not Delete Myself. Lösch <laughs> dich. Delete yourself. Oh, okay. Sorry, I, I mixed it up. Okay, so you are a politics YouTuber, and according to my information, one of the ten most hated people online. So thank you for being on stage. Next to me, is, next to me, is Sibel. You were part of the team that uh, used to check out the topic, where does the hate in the net come from? And you were also used to being a troll online. And in between there's Patrick, uh, uh, director and author of the movie. You also took part in this in this project. Your, your uh, res resume, it was very uh, hard. OK, cooperation with Berlin as well. Okay, my last guest is this one, a guy called Jan. Hello. Hi. Ich bin auch troll. I am also a troll. Jan, next parallel to the doco, Jan uh, did research about organized hate online. It must be an awesome image on the stage. And so Jan created his own army, who is 50,000 strong, I hear. Jan, how do you feel about the general of being the general of 50,000 love army? So it's a bit more people who watch my TV show. It's about, not about 50,000, uh, latest information is 43,940. We were at 51,000 already, but in the last two days, we had randomly some server problems, and so things changed, but they, this will change again. So what is your motivation to create this army? Okay, first of all, it's not an army. Army is a term from 80 years ago. I think we should call it a satirical internet project without relevance in the real world or an accidentally created public movement with 40,000 people who don't feel like communicating uh, with in a, com in a way that is just ending in a huge brawl and weird results. So what we thought about like we've done this for a few years like professional trolling and experiments what you can say and what not and where's the dividing line between satire and rea reality and what can you do to show people that thing is a thing is satire so today everyone is doing satire even even the fasc fascists who are in militaristic discord server and they call themselves satire and of course i also i personally as a professional I have distinctive tendencies in my team and also with other people who've done this job. 
like making people laugh or being comical or stand-up comedians. And there's a kind of like distinction. And we asked ourselves, what is the difference between us and those people who post like people of dead kid kids or make fun of disabled people? And what is the, the difference between them and us? And we found out that if you continue this game, then and don't stop at some point and, and say like this is real life and this is a role that is a, on a bestimmt topic, then this is not good. So we have other co-workers who are in the focus for prominent, they have many prominent friends, many influencers, and they all in contact with each other. And we realize that this spiral of communication that's going downwards, in my opinion, this this whole, all the fake accounts and all the organized, let's, let's uh, attack someone, this leads to people thinking something is normal like like <laughs> like the constitution so you ask yourself wait wait how wrong is it really now people who think this is wrong they are wrong so in a way this is it's a distinction between something that you think rea is real which is the internet and the real reality so there's like at, at some point there's no exit anymore to, and so we took this documentation as a way to look at this topic so it's not an army <laughs> we have many people and it's not very large uh, we have people who are talking to, talking to these people and they were moderators not only in our company but also in uh, out of the company so so there's not not one person who commands 50,000 people but who is embedded in a democratic not very transparent, but filled with good people, uh, community. And so we realized, we, did, we didn't realize this would be as big. Am I still talking or did the server crash? Well, I want to, I want to interrupt you. You can interrupt me just as you want to. I'm really big on this. So you can see all the pores in my face. That doesn't look good, actually. Stay there, right? <laughs> So everything is okay. Um, you see, that's a really important topic to you, um, and I also want to talk to this on the, to the people on the stage. You have been a troll for a long time. Did you also spread hate? I trolled a lot. You can see that in the in the report, uh, and we had we had a special action uh, with love trolling. And we spread hate. And if if you are a person undercover in that network, and if you want to be verified, you have to have a certain history on your social media accounts. And to have those, we had to share things I wouldn't ever share in my real accounts. It's mostly about memes on German politicians that are really, really heavy. And there's also certain borders where we thought, OK, I would never share this. And I didn't do that. And it was not only me, it was a whole team. And we, we, we took a bit of everything in our, in our work. Did it? Did it change you, the whole experiment? Yeah, it did. It had a really big impact on myself because I had to focus on stuff I would never have contact with in my, in my normal life. With this filter bubble people talk about, I only see content in my online use that uh, confirm what I think about. And I was I, I had to step out actively to talk about things that are completely contrary on the contrary to my to my basic life. And I started to question things because I had to be open to everything. Why do you, why do the people do that? It's such a dark image on the world that was that was approaching me and the view of other people. That, that really drags you down. 
Jan, can you please stop the Carhartt advertisement? Thank you. Just go down a little bit. Thank you. Thank you, Sibel. Let's continue with Reich. Uh, the, the, the movie was shown on your, on your channel, the message, delete yourself. Did you ever think about when you get all these hate comments? It was also a bit of love, but it was a lot of hate as well. Um, how, do you, how do you handle this when you're just a target for, for all this hate? In my case, uh, all, the, all the attraction of hate uh, was, was basically my idea, or basically I wanted it to be like that. Uh, I, had, I had a format poor Germany where I wanted to reach all the people who don't use this in, a, in, a, in an ironic way in the dark corners of the internet, for example, Focus Online. <laughs> In all comment, comment areas, no matter what topic it is, you have all these people saying, ah, oh, poor Germany, poor Germany. I tried to, when I, when I started my YouTube channel, I tried to, 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 to attract people thinking like this. Um, and you, you, might, you, you might have gotten the, th the thought that you are on the most right-wing channel on YouTube. Uh, that was not my view. I just chose chose quotes and I argumented against it. My hope was that some people might be dragged out of the filter bubble and the naive hope that some people might think about that, that point of view. And uh, it was always part of my YouTube work, so uh, this this was basically uh, added with my new movie. It was, it was a little bit more. But qualitatively, it, it was nothing really new. Uh, some, someone might think I wouldn't have have uh, have interest. Have you might think I wouldn't I wouldn't feel like doing YouTube anymore. But all my trauma tasks that I already had, like George Bush, just uh, being at home, like. But just because of the reaction to this movie, I wouldn't say ah, I don't want to do this anymore. Yeah, this is worth an applause. Jan, how do you deal with uh, hate and hate reactions in your TV show? Okay, so first of all, we also provoke a lot of hate. So I would say, like, in the documentation, I, I watched it. And also, we don't really know each other. Like, Reik and his crew, crew is a... this we, we try to cooperate like between our TV show and Reich's crew and the uh, research was very exhaustive that they did and what so in our TV show what we also do we produce hate like we make people hate us rightfully so uh, but usually we have a goal and our goal is like to take people online like people who are trolls like 15 15 year old wankers like who are not have nothing to this to do like they just, they just watched all the pornos and then they just take this like a game uh, you shouldn't uh, mix those up with the right wing trolls who use who do this uh, on political grounds but with my work the danger is that this thing that uh, that actually uh, brings all of us together is like there's a reduction of hesitation and we do this more online and and then on TV because we have to actually abide by the law because usually we actually do exactly how far we are able to go in most cases like sometimes we go a little bit too far but in the end we this is is important and also back then it was important, important and so we do everything that is uh, uh, allowed by the law and we ask ourselves how can we uh, create a humanist view or friendly uh, meet up with the real world but using our art which we do 
and just like putting those art, this art out there and create debates that let people watch into our directions. And this, so this is a good idea. And this also means that sometimes people, you can get a deal with people who want the complete opposite and want to bring attention to that. And that's what you do is like you use communication mediums online just, just for the attention. And, but whenever we provoke hate, we know that in advance and we are prepared for it. But we usually do it with a goal. And that is the difference between us and those trolls. But this is also what we have in common with the right-wing trolls. They also have a goal. But I would understand if we wouldn't, if we hadn't had tried that already. But it didn't work. But so it's time to do something against this. But we had the feeling we have this tool, and now let's do something with this. And I could talk about this for hours. But not in public, so now it's your turn again. OK, now back to Patrick, the director and author of the movie. So you did research with the team for a whole year. So the question is, are you giving, giving people more room than necessary even? OK, so we give them more room than they had before in the public, and that is always something a risk. And that also the TV show said this, we give them what they need, which is attention. And that is, of course, a problem. But we thought about this. And our resume was, we have to do this movie, be movie because the danger that comes from this topic is very large. Like people who are hacked and the, whose social media accounts are deleted by some weird hackers from the troll scene, but also for the discourse. Uh, because some topics just delete themselves, which is the name of the movie also. Like some topics just can't be had, can't be debated because they are, seem to be too provocative, like refugees or like equality of the sexes or same pay. And we get the feeling because of these trolls that these are like horrible, horribly uh, divisive topics, but they, they're not really are. So we want to just put uh, attention to these people. And so what is your uh, resume after this one year? What can you do against hate? So one thing is pretty lame. That, that is, there is no real answer to that. And when we started a year ago, we had this thought, oh, yeah, let's fight back. We try this. We try this out. It can't be that hard if they can do it. And that's how we started. And then the movie, we show how we did that, like that we had to at least try how it works, like to hack a social network. And it's like surprisingly easy, which shows us how broken everything is really. So we're like seven seven people who can really do nothing and we, we were able to use one afternoon to create fake accounts and just like make trouble and that is a problem so that's one problem that we have to talk to these social networks about creating fake publicity but on the other thing is like Jan Böhmermann helped us create this love toy that we created and this shows that I, I like I like it's satirical, but it's also serious. A way of uh, a way of organizing civil courage, and that's what it's all about. Like that's why we are here on this server. And this shows there's a certain feeling of like we don't want this shit anymore. Yeah. Okay, let's go back to what you just said in the movie. You start a thing called laugh trolling, and it is at backfires. It creates a huge backlash. Jan, do you believe that you will be re successful regardless? Most definitely. Everything else, saying anything else, would be stupid. So seriously, and like, just I, I didn't realize this would experience such a resonance. This is very surprising. So just on the day after our piece, we had 20,000 people on the server. And at the end, it broke down at 45,000 people. So in a structural way, we accidentally created a human rights, citizens' rights movement. And the other people on the podium also think that this is serious and, and friendly. But I don't, I disagree because I think this is not the solution. What is the solution then? 
But like after five, six, seven years looking at this, I have to ask the questions, is, do we even want a debate? Does a debate even work? Is this even reality? I just close the laptop and I'm like surprised because there's nice weather outside, but it has nothing to do with reality, nothing to do with what happens in there, like neither in a communicative way nor nor in the way that uh, like people who are organized can make a lot of noise and that you can p uh, put something against that you can offer talking and you can be you can create more noise for the other side and it's actually pretty easy and it surprised us how easy it was and how much positive energy came out of that and I also believe that if you have some courage and it takes courage to say like it's enough i understood this Beta norm shit, Merkel is a puppet, history. Like, if I t think about this, like, like of, of this, like, who is who is like shouting like system conformant at people in a free democracy in this uh, in this uh, middle European piece of Germany, and who shouts these things at people? Someone who doesn't want this to exist anymore. So you have to think about how do I see these things? And these are questions that you never really thought about before because they were they seemed like obvious. They were given to us, but you realize that this is actually pretty cool. And human rights is actually is very this like our constitution is actually such an anti-fascistish fascist constitution. And this is not something that paid for, pay for, or like moved or whatever. Like we are anti-fascists. Even our police, if they adhere to their rules, are an anti-fascist police. So we have the best uh, outcomes for our society to actually work. And so this is cool. I want to say two important things. <laughs> I mean, it's unfair that I'm so such large and I'm interrupting the talk, and this wasn't planned. But okay, two things. Um, that I want to say, and then you can just talk without me. One, I realized there is like these, this free Dennis story where people just work to, to, together who usually don't work together at all, like from Build to Jungle World, Jungle World, free journalists from all over Europe, people, people like were offering for the German Dennis Jüger, who were representing what Germany stands for, and everyone was in there. And I was like, hey, that's just weird. There's a there's a consent to be like for a good thing for that everyone stands for. And that was like the first thing I realized. There is something that actually uh, combines us. That and the second thing is that is very important is the courage and to realize oneself, the courage to say like, okay, I don't have to be religious, and I don't have to not like the army or the Bundeszentrale für politische Bildung or the Chancellor, but like on a very basic way, I actually agree that it is good to have peace and consent to live together. And that is, ha that is happy. So it takes courage to actually realize this. And then the, all these inf insults don't really touch you anymore. You're, you're like, so what? Whatever, that's just me, sent me more disgusting gifts, gifts with uh, whatever. Thank you, Jan. <laughs> to come to an end, I want to talk about courage because, and the question where hate begins and where you can see that there's a border that I don't want to cross. Uh, do you have something that you don't do? For example, sharing hate comments about spinach eating vegans from Prenzlberg. Do you have some? Well, where does your where does where's line for you in your private life? In the private life, there's no borders. I don't really care about that. There's always people you hate, uh, but there's a difference between uh, going to people. And we had a lot of people who said, "There, what's so bad about hating people? Who cares, really?" Um, what also belongs to that are the stories we are talking about, for example, strategic hacking of people and uh, posting compromising images on the internet. Um, 
we, we have to put them under maximum uh, psychological pressure. Um, it, it matters if you just hate, uh, don't like someone or if you want to destroy their lives. And there's so many people coming together to to, to to hate people that have a completely political agenda, a completely different political agenda. You can't compare it to the private life where you say, well, neighbor, just switch off your bloody music. Uh, that's not comparable. Thank you for the question. Um, I wanted to answer s something else. I wanted to tell Jan, I think it's really important uh, to spread the, the, the courage. Um, but there's a realistic expression of this. Um, it's kind of broken what happens in the digital world, and it's annoying. Uh, sun is o only o sun is not only shining outside, but there's also real life trolls. There's a right wing movement that that also works from uh, trolling, uh, and you're crossing borders, Nazis. Um, there's a whole party basing on this, and we don't have an answer to this. Uh, also in the analog life, um, and we have to. We, we we shouldn't let people play this game online, um, and the hate hateful communication is also also existent in the mainstream media. So I want to ask Sibel, and then Jan, you are allowed to say something. You experienced it yourself. You spread hate on the internet. Uh, do you have? Where, where's your Where's your border? I think there's a there's a natural point of view on this. Every person has a certain amount of empathy, and there's a big difference between not liking something or let it be, well, not, not really, uh, yeah, not really liking something the way that it's said, but working respectful on this. If there's a topic, for example, or a person or a group, you can you can get some kind of basic discourse without uh, having people having fear, uh, having the fear to say what they actually feel. People have a subjective uh, subjective uh, situation, and it's it's not the objective reality. Objective reality. Uh, it's all about the trolling. When it comes to the trolling. Um, we couldn't talk about scientific situations. There's rational situations and there's emotional situations, and we have to we have to respect that this we also have this emotional basis for everyone. Yeah. Jan, do you also want to say something? <laughs> no, no. If you want to. Uh, just join join us. Don't 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 have the fear to talk to Bundeswehr to the police. Open yourself. Be nice and responsible for everything. Yeah, it's it's kind of esoteric. It's not really really a good end word. We're working on our servers, and we we want to call to action on this debate. Thank you. We received it. So, thank you for this talk. The documentation Delete Yourself is available on the YouTube channel of Reich. And I heard that all of you are here today. So if you have any questions on these people, just approach them on Republica. Thank you. Vielen Dank.